October is National Bullying Prevention Month, and it's also Global Diversity Awareness Month. Do you see the irony here? <laughs> yes. Talk to me a little bit about what links the two together. So I think in thinking about bullying, um, particularly our Captain Compassion campaign is really focused around racially motivated bullying. And I think that's an important topic for to teach kids about how to prevent that. And in particular, thinking about the three R's, which is recognizing when the bullying is happening, being able to refuse the behavior, in particular, being a good upstander and intervening, and then reporting the behavior if it's happening. And particularly when it's related to racially motivated bullying, um, thinking about how we want to teach kids to be kind and really value diversity and create really inclusive communities and environments. And I'm glad you highlighted the two. Um, the statistics are staggering. Seven out of 10 children witness bullying in school and 50% of minority children witness racially motivated cyberbullying. I saw those numbers and it really took me back. Are we, when we, when we highlight those numbers, are we specifically talking about children to, to children bullying, adults, societal issues, or what's coming into play here? Yeah, it's definitely children to children or youth to youth. Um, there are some other numbers that are really important for us to think about. You know, one in three Black children um, are victims of racially motivated bullying or discrimination. That's larger than any other racial group. And in the past 18 months or so during the pandemic, we know that anti-Asian hate and discrimination have really skyrocketed. And what's interesting about that is that in those instances, only one in 10 folks have actually intervened and that number is just way too low. We really need to improve that. And so again, I think that's the point of what we're trying to teach kids through our Captain Compassion comics, which is really that it's important to be good upstanders and to intervene when they see bullying happening because we know through research when kids do that, you can reduce bullying incidences almost up to 50%, which is huge. But that is huge. Can you talk to me a little bit about why these numbers are, you touched on it a little bit, but can we, can we talk about why these numbers are so high? Yeah, you know, I think there's different characteristics of, you know, why folks might be uh, victims of bullying. And one interesting thing to note is that research shows that sometimes kids are victims of bullying because they might be different. And so if you think about the multiple identities that kids bring to a particular context, that race or gender um, can come into play. And so that may be why that racially motivated bullying is so high. When kids witness bullying, what steps should they take? What should they do? Yeah, I think they first need to recognize that it's happening. And like I said, I think it's really important for witnesses and bystanders to say something and really intervene. It's important to do that and unleash their upstander power. And then I think really importantly is to report the behavior to a trusted adult. And given that I think the role of adults is super important, whether that be educators or families, because there is also research that shows that kids sometimes are reluctant to tell adults, particularly in schools, because they feel like when they do that the adults either make the situation worse or aren't going to do anything about it. So I think as adults, we play a big role in bullying prevention. Absolutely. And can we take it to the parent side? If you're a parent of a child, not only who is being bullied, bullied but who may be the person, the child doing the bullying, what steps should be taken there? I think it's important to listen and have open and honest conversations about what might be going on, um, what might be leading them to bully, for instance, if they're the ones being the bully, and to listen to if they're being victimized. And then again, I think it's really important to show support and to intervene to on behalf of your child. And one thing that we don't talk about as often as I think we should, and of clearly prevention um, is important, but bullying has some long-term effects. Can we talk about mental health and how these kids who are experiencing this may have trauma later in life? Yeah, there are definitely, you know, serious long-term effects from bullying, you know, such as depression, anxiety, substance use. 
But I think what might be surprising to some folks is that actually everyone involved in bullying can be negatively impacted. So not just the victims of bullying, but those who are actually bullying can have negative outcomes. And what might be really surprising is that even witnesses or bystanders can have negative outcomes as well. So given that, since it affects all children involved, prevention really is key. And that's why we really, again, have developed this Captain Compassion campaign where we provide free resources for educators and parents to learn more about how they might be able to intervene.